You're listening to the Pool Boy Podcast. Hello, this is the Pool Boy Podcast. I'm Steve, and on this episode, we're continuing our series looking back at previous Commonwealth Games. Today, we're recalling one of the tougher assignments that swimmers have faced as we travel back to Delhi in 2010 in the company of a podcast friend, Lizzie Simmons. Let's have a listen. Back talking Commonwealth Games memories and uh, heading back to 2010 on this uh, episode and sharing her experiences with us. Lizzie Simmons, welcome back to the podcast. Thank you very much. Good to be here. Um, probably caveat the conversation by saying that 2010 is a long time ago. <laughs> so... <laughs> <laughs> well, this is all about looking back and, and getting recollections. So uh, we will see what your memory can can bring back to you. Um, but before we, we dive into to Delhi directly, I mean, what, how do you feel about the Commonwealth Games generally? I mean, you went to Olympics, you went to World Championships, Europeans, all those kind of things and had a lot of success. Um, and actually, by the time Delhi came around as your first Commonwealth Games, you'd already been to all of those. Um, so, so how did it, how does it stack up? Yeah, Commonwealth Games is a really interesting one. I think, um, obviously, like Olympics is the, the big one. It's the kind of pinnacle, that multi-sport environment that we all love competing at, kind of being in, inside a village. Um, and then, obviously, the Europeans and World Championships are just sport specific. So we're just there as aquatics. And Commonwealth is like somewhere in the middle of those. So you're still getting that multi-sport environment. Um, but obviously it's only a, you know, a few kind of major nations that are competing at that level. So it almost feels, I think, like a, a fun version of the Olympics without you know, as much pressure and, and that kind of big kind of pinnacle moment that, that you get every four years from, from the Olympic Games. I think the unusual thing for us with the, um, with the Commonwealth Games is obviously we split the home nations. So, um, you know, we're suddenly competing, particularly in relay teams, it's quite odd to be competing against who would usually be your peers um, for Team GB. And it's quite nice to, to bring some of that kind of rivalry. We get teammates that are going against each other because we, we split England, Scotland and, and Wales. So, um, yeah, it's a, it's a fun event. It's always one that we really look forward to. Um, it's been in some interesting places in the world, which gives us a great opportunity to travel as well. Although a couple of editions, obviously, in the UK and one more coming up soon. So, um, yeah, it's a, a, a fun one, definitely. So you, you say it's in some uh, some different places compared to perhaps your your uh, normal um, aquatic championships. Uh, obviously, twenty ten was a was a a different place for for swimmers to go to. Uh, obviously, held in Delhi, um, but we'll, we'll talk about Delhi in a minute. But twenty ten was a was a funny year, uh, or an unusual year for British swimmers because you had Europeans sort of early in the year and Commonwealth late in the year. How did you deal with the two competitions in the one year, or did you prioritise one, or you aiming to do well at both yeah interesting question and I was trying to bring my mind back to that point if we go back even a little bit further it was even more of an interesting year because the back end of 2009 we banned the shiny suits so those um, all body neoprene suits that we had in the summer of 09 and all of those world records I'm sure you remember all those world records broken at the world championships and by the end of 2009, those suits were completely banned. So it was almost a bit of a fresh start for the world of swimming going into 2010 of how are people going to adapt to, you know, the textile suits and much um, more kind of restriction in terms of technology. Um, I was definitely one of the swimmers who didn't benefit as much from the neoprene suits. So I, I, I think I did PB in 09, but not significantly. Um, and actually my fastest times came from 2010. So I started that op- that year off really, really well. I think I was right up there at the top of the world rankings from our um, from our trials in Sheffield at the, the beginning of that, that year. Um, I think from memory, uh, we, were, we were due to focus on the Commonwealth Games and we were meant to have a much smaller taper for the Europeans in the summer. Um, it, if any taper, I think some people were, were completely unrested. I think we did rest up a little bit for Europeans. I swam really fast that summer. I won the um, won the 200 back at the Europeans, came second in the 100 back. And uh, Gemma Spoffoth, my obviously peer in, in backstroke, um, she won the 100 and came second in the 200. So we had this nice little kind of <laughs> dual uh, podium moment for both of those events. So that was a great, a great meet. It was outdoors in the sun in Budapest. Um, and we weren't fully, we definitely weren't fully rested for it, but there were some really fast swims at that meet. I think by the time that Delhi came around, we realised that it was 
probably going to be a little bit more of a survival mode kind of competition to go to and we weren't quite sure what to expect so i think we did we did taper properly or we did rest up properly for um the commonwealth games but by the time we kind of actually got out there i think we you know we saw some bigger challenges than just having two back-to-back -back meets um you know major major meets in the year so uh so yeah an interesting year in terms of setup we're obviously seeing something kind of similar due to the pandemic this year in terms of back-to-back -back meets but um but a, a good one to get some practice with definitely so coming off though of those europeans you, you know you said you were swimming well you'd you know won the 200 relatively comfortably i think looking at the times um and... yeah, i'd also crashed into the lane ropes at least 500 times so i'd done like 207 <laughs> meters at least <laughs> a nightmare oh. swimming in the sun <laughs> <laughs> but um you know notwithstanding the challenges that we'll talk about in delhi in a minute and i'm sure um did you go there with with high expectations of of doing well yeah definitely um i think i was probably quite balanced in terms of my event strengths across commonwealth and europeans i think some events at that point were re either really, really strong at European and actually there was no competition at Commonwealth Games level or vice versa, you know, all of the competition was coming from Aussies and Canadians. I think I had a bit of a, a bit of a mix. Obviously, Spoff was at both of those, so she was one of my biggest competitors. Um, but there were some strong Europeans um, and then also, of course, the the Australians. And I think I think we still had, is it three per nation for Commonwealth Games? So you can still have, you know, a, a whole podium from, from one nation if they are dominant in, in an event. So I think I felt confident I'd done some, you know, my fastest times ever had come from that year. I felt like I'd built very well on the previous year. Lots of people were having to almost strike out their PBs because of the, the, the shiny suit era and saying, you know, I'll be lucky to ever get to those times again, whereas I completely superseded those times straight away. Um, so I was definitely feeling confident. Um, uh, off the back of the trials and then the Europeans as well. Um, and yeah, looking forward to the to the competition going into it. I knew there was going to be some tough, uh, tough competition, particularly from the Australians at that point. The, can the Canadians weren't quite the same level um, uh, that they are now in terms of backstroke swimming. So, so you get into the to the village, you know, you see the pool for the first time. Uh, you mentioned, you know, it was going to be a bit more about survival, for want of a better word. <laughs> um getting through what i mean what kind of of things were you thinking or you know that were going to affect your your swimming performance that that you know that you were encountering yeah i think the the thing that probably didn't help was we went to a holding camp in doha and stayed in the most amazing like five star hotel so our um our expectations coming into the to the village the comparison was was quite stark i remember there being a lot of noise in the media about things not being ready and you know it just being completely unsuitable the the village and the venues and i actually remember getting there and thinking oh this has been hyped up way out of proportion like there was definitely there would it definitely wasn't the level that we would expect from that com kind of competition and it you know the the standard wasn't quite as high as as um you know you'd expect from a village environment but when we got there, it it wasn't awful. The, you know, there were a few fixtures and fittings that that needed completing, a few mattresses that needed fitting, and and things like that. But um, but it, it I remember thinking that this has been hyped up more than you know more than it needed to be in terms of the media, which which always happens to to a certain extent. I think as we went on, the the main challenges for the swim team were around food and and sickness. And I think all all sports experience this to a certain extent and it you know it's very much to be expected from a nation you know a country where it's not safe to, to drink the tap water and lots of you know fruits and vegetables might have been washed in in tap water and things um and i think it was it was exacerbated for the swimmers because we're in that kind of watery environment so i think germs probably spread a, spread a bit differently than they do in maybe an athletic stadium or um or maybe a gymnastics um kind of hall or whatever um i think you know there were things that didn't work i think the the pool temperature was wrong when we got there they had they had to have this mad rush to increase the temperature of the the pool because it was much colder than was like fina regulated standards so there was this the kind of mad dash I think similar to what happened in Rio in the diving pool, that there was some chemical kind of imbalance and the pool went green at, at one point. There was this massive stadium, but it was com you know completely empty. There were no spectators there, which was really kind of, well, minimal spectators, which was quite sad. Um, and, you know, just the little things like you're traveling from the, the village to the venue and, um, 
like the buses took all the way from 15 minutes to an hour and a half and you weren't quite sure which one you were getting on so like just having to build in extra time around preparation and 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 things like that and as we went through we definitely did have you know a mixture of kind of sickness across the team and you'll speak to different people about their experiences of that maybe some of that's not for for recording <laughs> going into too many details on it but um I, I was probably got off fairly lightly. I definitely wasn't wasn't super well, but I you know wasn't absolutely horrendous. Didn't end up kind of having to miss the competition or anything like that. And it's re- it's really interesting because um, I, I reflected on this with some coaches afterwards, actually from different sports, and they introduced a concept that we I'd not heard of until that point in in swimming. But it's something that we kind of you know definitely think about. And they they said that the way that they spoke about um, kind of dealing with adversity like this particularly when everybody's having to deal with the same things is this understand accept and thrive kind of mentality so first of all like understand the environment that you're in what what's going on can we change stuff can we not accept that that's how it is you know there were lots and lots and lots of people that just had a moan about it when we were out there but there was nothing we could do about the food standards there was nothing we could do about the rooms there was nothing we could do about the transport other than kind of do our best to be on time for things and then it brought in this really interesting notion of like, how are you going to respond to this better than other countries or your competitors? And I think we definitely saw that at those games. Some people, you know, were were really, really sick and that kind of just took them out of competition completely. But others were almost, it was just too challenging to even contemplate thriving in that environment. Whereas I think there were some people who kind of stepped up to that challenge and were like, everyone's dealing with this. We're all in the same position. And... I'm still going to go out there and, you know, give my best performance and do everything in, in my control to perform well. I think I was somewhere in the middle. I probably didn't get that perfectly right. I definitely did a little bit of moaning. <laughs> um, but but uh, I did manage to come away with a, a silver medal in the 200, which I was really, really pleased about. I think, you know, in a perfect year, I would have would have hoped to have got the gold. Um, but uh, I think in, you know, with the challenges and the, the kind of, uh, difficulties around competing in that environment coming home with the silver was was a really good result for me so yeah it was a, a very interesting experience um but it, it definitely taught me a lot as well and and I guess after something like that you you, you definitely compare things in a much brighter light moving forwards <laughs> you do. well we'll come to the 200 in a minute but you, you know you had uh, the 100 up first and I think it's probably fair to say it didn't go quite to plan I think you were 10th in the semi-finals and you didn't make the final I don't know if you were ill at that point or or on a downhill or uphill you know deterioration or recovery or whatever <laughs> but uh but you know that probably wasn't the way you wanted to start How, did that knock your confidence at all or did you, were you able to rationalize it to the environment and the conditions and you know physical well-being yeah I think from memory um what had happened in the 100 was I hadn't been feeling great for a couple of days around that And I think what we tried to do was a little bit of an energy conservation kind of tactic of in the early rounds, just almost do the bare minimum to get through to the next round so that you're not, you know, not expending too much energy in the heats and the semifinals to get through, you know, get through to the final and then you can give it all at that point. Um, I think for me, I probably just messed that up slightly. So I think it was a bit of both. I wasn't particularly well and that was why we had this, we decided with this strategy um, and then I, it just didn't quite go to plan. I didn't, you know, I didn't give enough energy to, to actually make it through to that final. From memory, and um, you may correct me on this, I, I can't fully remember, but I think that gave me a day off between the, the 100 and the 200. I think the 100 was the day before, the finish the day before the two. Um, you're, you're looking down at your schedule to see, <laughs> see if I'm, t- I I'm, I'm talking rubbish. I think it did, or at least gave me a bit, a little bit more time before the two to... Um, probably just get back a little bit mentally more than more than anything of kind of you know this is it this is this is you know this is the situation and it's kind of your choice of you know how how you know what what you're going to make of the experience I guess um, so it, it, in hindsight it maybe wasn't a bad thing for me um, because I think if I'd done that final and you know come sixth or seventh that probably would have been even worse for my 200 whereas to have a little bit of a break and just you know mentally come back to it I think I was uh, training with um Ross Davenport Davo at the time I think he gave me a really stern talking to after the 100 I remember him bringing me to one side and having a chat with me (laughs) giving me a bit of a talking to and just kind of you know 
pull your socks up a little bit unless you're literally on death's door then <laughs> stop coming up with excuses which was probably a good yeah probably a good thing for me to hear because uh yeah it's easy to go into that kind of survival mode i guess but it's um yeah it's good to come back to reality at some point it wasn't it wasn't life or death for me definitely at that <laughs> that competition well, you've kind of preempted my next question because you were due to have the fifty. There were two days between the hundred uh, and then the, the two hundred. Like and you, 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 you did, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I thought, and the uh, the official Commonwealth Games website rather unkindly shows you as having finished thirty third. I thought that can't be right, but um, but no, <laughs> you, was you, it you like a swim you race or something. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, so that would have been yeah similar yeah. similar kind of thing. I you know underperformed for whatever reason in the hundred and thought my my. I'm never great in the 50 anyway as all of it always a bit of a splash and dash for me um so it would have yeah would have been just a point of taking a taking yeah. a bit of a break physically and mentally and getting back for for that 200. So so you regrouped for the 200 I mean you you kind of touched on it with your energy conservation strategy there because the the, the although the quality at Converse can be very high at, at the top the fields are often not very deep um so you know you had that strategy i assume again in the 200 to to do enough with yeah. no semi-finals to make make it back for the evening yeah yeah i think it would have been similar although i think at commonwealth we don't not have semi-finals for 200 no, no semi-finals for 200 no yeah, just... no straight heat to final yeah <laughs> i'm glad you're here for a fact check um, yeah, so, so you know you have to be a little bit more careful in that morning heat it only takes a few from you know people who do great pbs in the morning to get through into that final and, and you're in trouble so I'm, I'm sure i was more cautious about where i was finishing that but um 200 was always my you know my stronger event anyway um even though I like to think of myself as a hundred swimmer, <laughs> 200 tended to be stronger. So, um, yeah, I think I probably had a similar tactic, but with probably with those firm words from Davo at the back of my head, just uh, about not messing up this time. Um, and, you know, putting yourself in a good position to give it all in, in that too. So I think, I think you were fourth through, I think, if I, if I remember right. There you go. <laughs> yeah. So, um, there you go. But it, there, you know, do you remember much about that race? I mean, it was, um, you know, it was you and, and Megan Nay and Emily Seabom who were kind of ahead of the rest of the field as a as a three. But do you remember anything about about you know how that went? I think um, <laughs> I remember the pool still being really cold, <laughs> and I remember that being really frustrating because I used to hate jumping in at the beginning and like looking up at your arms. And you had like goosebumps. Obviously, it's better if you just dive in and go, but we have to jump in at the beginning. So when the pool's cold it's um it's frustrating so i remember the pool being cold and i think i think my only other thought was a little bit around that kind of just surviving and just kind of getting through it like obviously gave it absolutely everything i was probably you know with not ideal preparation by this point in the competition we were only eating things that came in packages in the in the uh, kind of catering tent so we were eating like pizza, donuts, and bread. That was basically our, our diet <laughs> for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. So there were lots of things at that point that just, you know, weren't great in terms of preparation. I definitely had a couple of nights where I'd been up in the night and stuff, and, you know, my, my insides were not too happy <laughs> with, with what was going on by this point. But I think in some ways that probably took the pressure off a little bit. I think, like, you know, everybody was in the same position. Every time you came to the pool, there was you know, there was, there were more people who hadn't shown up because they, you know, they'd been taken out through sickness. So it was this continual kind of like, who's even going to make it from heats to finals because somebody goes back to the village and, and, you know, doesn't get through the, the next couple of hours. I think one day at the pool, like all of the running water broke. So there were no toilets, no showers, no sinks, like nothing at all. Now, add to that the fact that lots of people have got dodgy tongues. <laughs> you can probably imagine it wasn't uh it wasn't a great situation but uh, yeah i think like we were we were almost laughing about it by that point we were almost saying like hey guys like we've made it to the final like we, we've done <laughs> we've done pretty well just to be in this kind of you know eight of us sitting here ready to go and i, I know all the aussies really well and you know we had some good laughs around it as well so i remember enjoying just being there and having the opportunity to go and go and give it my all i genuinely i don't think had any idea how i would how i would swim um i remember desperately wanting to be on the podium so i wanted to come home with a medal of some some regard and that was probably because i'd had such a good year and i felt like i deserved to be on the podium given the times that i'd been swimming 
Um, but I but I didn't know how it was going to go. In terms of the race itself, I can't, I can't remember how I how I saw it. How I but you you'll probably be able to tell me more if you've got the stats there. But um, uh, yeah, I I don't remember how it was. I think I just remember the kind of mentality around it and just thinking this is such an unusual <laughs> kind of build up to an event where normally you're like everything trying to get get it absolutely perfect and this was like get to the start line. <laughs> Well, against that backdrop, 2079, you know, suddenly takes on a, a whole different context, doesn't it? Because, you know, you'd swum faster earlier in the year, but, you know, in, in that environment, I, that's pretty good. Yeah, definitely. I, I think it's, you know, it was the third or fourth or fifth fastest that I ever went in my career. So it was it was definitely um, a really, a really strong swim. And maybe for me, you know, I, I always struggled when I, there was too much pressure as well. So maybe for me, that was a, you know, that was a good thing that it was almost like at that point you know whatever we get at this point we're, we're going to just accept it and it's just a chance to go kind of go all in and then that's put yeah it was maybe beneficial for me um to to be in that position um and as i mentioned you know some of the other girls had had gone through the, the hundreds the 50 and then turned up for the for the two and i'd had a little bit of a break so that was probably a good thing for me mentally and physically as well to um to do that um but yeah, I remember coming away from it feeling really, feeling really pleased with the with the position. I don't think I was disappointed that I that I'd not won because it had been such a kind of up and down week um, for so many reasons. So um, yeah, it was it was still a great a great time and great experience. So you don't look at it as a missed opportunity, I suppose, for a title with all those other things going on. No, I don't. I don't think so. Um, probably the bigger one for me was the Europeans back in in the summer, um, and I think yeah, it it was. I don't know. I mean, it would have been great to get the gold and become world champion. Definitely, I think um, for 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 the kind of lead up that we'd had though, and the fact that we had had those double competitions as well, which you know the rest of the world hadn't had those in the, in the summer. Um, it was yeah, it was, and the, the, as you said, the time was still really decent so it wasn't like a you know finishing a, in a 210 and been thinking oh god that was absolutely miles away from where I could have been um it was only really a little bit off you know where I've been elsewhere in the year so um yeah I don't I you know I, I couldn't have done any more I don't think to to do to to get the the gold so um I, I remember kind of feeling satisfied with the with the meets um yeah I know we had a few few who ended up on the top of the podium at that competition but um yeah i was i was okay with silver you, you <laughs> silver lining after a, a bit of a challenging week <laughs> i can't argue with the medal can you let's be honest but um you know and the the one thing i i recall you know from from the the podium presentations from delhi is you know normally you get a cuddly toy or a some other memorabilia but they had the they gave you the the like sort of scarf. really nice scarves yeah <laughs> I found that the other day in the attic. <laughs> that's, that's where my medals live. Um, yeah, I found that the other day. I was like, where is that? Oh, yeah, that's where that came from. Um, yeah, yeah, I remember that. It was um, it was good. And and it was, you know, it, it was it was a challenging meet because of all, you know, all of our expectations at that kind of level are quite stringent. You know, you're doing everything you can for, for four years or two years or a year or whatever to be able to perform on the day. And it's really frustrating when stuff gets in, in the way of that. Having said that, like it was an amazing opportunity to, to race in a country that, you know, none of us have ever been to. We've been to Australia a million times before, like, you know, competitions are great over there, but we've all been there and done it. It's English speaking, you know, we're very familiar with the, the culture and the people. And it was, an amazing opportunity to actually go somewhere completely different we you know even just driving around in the buses and things you you see some real sights all the way from you know real wealth to real poverty and it yeah it, i definitely appreciated the opportunity to go somewhere a bit different i don't you know i think in hindsight they probably weren't quite ready to stage a games as as big as the the commonwealth at that point um but it was definitely yeah it was an opportunity for us and it and it definitely opened up our eyes i guess to you know how lucky we are to have that high standard most of the times when we when we do race elsewhere so um it's definitely not something that i kind of reflect back and you know wish i hadn't gone or anything like that it was um it was just a very different experience to to what we probably had before are there any other 
swims that that stand out to you from the meet that you can remember watching? I accepting it's a lot, it's a while ago now, but yeah, um... the 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 ones that stand out. I feel like I remember watching the some of the relays and watching the Aussies just like dominate in in the relays. So I remember those. In terms of like English performance, um, I was sharing a room with Fran as I as I often did, and Fran, similar to me, had some had some tummy troubles, which we were probably giving each other far too much insight into what was what was going on in the bathroom in the night. But um, uh, um, she, I think Fran had, had been similar. She'd been not very well for a couple of days, and then had a bit of a kind of surprise, really great performance, and won the, the fifty fly. And I, um, I think that one for her, she was probably expected maybe to be higher in the freestyle events, and it was a bit of a oh wow like kind of that that was an amazing uh, I think she swam really really fast in that as well um and then I think quite shortly after Liam as well was on very good form obviously another training partner from uh, from the Titley crew in in Loughborough at that point so um I remember just just seeing those two kind of um perform really well I think they were I'm, my, my memory may be wrong but I think they were quite close together um so we kind of got double gold in terms of like the group quite um in quite a short time frame and then i yeah my probably the the most impact that um anybody had on my performance though was probably davos davos little pep talk so <laughs> thanks davos <laughs> um yeah gonna be gonna be harsh to be kind <laughs> sometimes when that, one of the swims that that stood out in the memory for me was um was your counterpart in the in the men's 200 back james goddard mm. i don't know if you recall that at all it was it was the british record until very recently um when when luke greenbank took it but he he absolutely nailed it that week i don't know if that's one that that sticks with you yeah i think that i think i do remember watching that and did he win the did he do the double and win the two medley as well did you see you looking up <laughs> yes he did yes okay thank goodness i've got to start right um yeah yeah definitely uh, there's some really strong performances there and you know that kind of highlights it there, there were some people who had some real challenges and i know it was frustrating for those who you know went out there and actually only raced once or didn't race at all but um but it wasn't it wasn't that bad and it was obviously still an environment where people could you know people were breaking british records and um you know commonwealth records i think lots of commonwealth records went as well um and the, yeah some some really strong performances still so so yeah it's it's something i kind of look back on with uh, fond memories but um but definitely remember some of the challenges as well once once the meet was over you obviously have a little bit of time before closing ceremony and everything and, and coming home you know were you able to kind of laugh it off at that point all the difficulty and, and just enjoy you know, <laughs> think, your time there with the other teams or, or was it still a bit of a fun environment to be in just wanted to get home i don't even remember whether i went to the closing ceremony i have no i don't have that stat i can't no help i don't I, i'm looking at you like, you, like you, could, you could tell me um i genuinely can't remember all i remember was that some people had opted to stay and and stay around for a few days and go and do some kind of sightseeing and stuff and i remember being simultaneously quite torn with oh it'd be really cool to actually go out without the pressure of racing and go and you know see some more of india and then thinking thank whatever that i am going home tomorrow <laughs> and you know can't wait to get back to a, a normal meal and some vegetables and um yeah something that wasn't a donut in a, in a packet so uh i don't i don't remember i think we left pretty soon after the swimming so whether that incorporated the um the the closing ceremony i, I can't remember all right then we'll start we'll draw this this uh reminiscence to a close is there is there one abiding memory of, of delhi for you <laughs> keep it clean yeah i was gonna say there are a couple but i'll probably share them with you afterwards you can decide whether you put them in um I mean, probably like the best one probably is the podium moment. I, I think at that point, like we we had a real laugh on the podium, I guess, you know, again, two people that I knew very well from Australia um, who were on the podium with me. And I remember walking around and kind of doing the victory lap. I don't know many people in the stands, but um, with our scarves on, uh, we needed it because it was freezing in there. Um, and, and yeah, and just feeling like it had definitely been, it felt like we'd come through something together. It felt like it was a, a real kind of, yeah, sense of achievement. But um, yeah, the the other memories I try not to <laughs> try not to think about too much. Probably made us stronger as swimmers though, so uh, it's not all bad. There we go. Well, it's uh, a Games with a Difference. Lizzie, great hearing your recollections. So thank you very much. No worries. Thanks for having me.
A games with a bit of a difference then for those who travelled to India back in 2010. Uh, if you want to read more about those games, you can go to poolboy.co.uk forward slash memories and uh, see a whole load more recollections of games from years past. Uh, if you want to get in contact, you can find me on social media at poolboy on Twitter at poolboyuk on Instagram uh, or go to poolboy.co.uk forward slash contact. Uh, if you've listened on Apple or Spotify, please do leave a review. Uh, we would really appreciate it. Uh, back soon with more, but thanks for listening. You've been listening to the Pool Boy Podcast. For more episodes, visit www.poolboy.co.uk slash podcast. <laughs>